Let's bring in the president of Finland, Sauli Niinistö. Mr. President, thank you for the time. Thank you. You share a long border with Russia. If you look at the map, you could draw almost a perfect uh, triangle to Moscow, Kyiv, and Helsinki. How do you see the last eight, nine days? Of course, uh, like uh, I guess all of us, we are very surprised. Something almost impossible has taken place. No one could have Im imagined that in Europe, uh, in 2020, something like this would happen. And uh, it uh, seems to continue. Uh, it is uh, uh, it's a tragedy. You had a meeting today with President Biden in the Oval Office. How did you take that meeting and what did you take away from it? We discussed uh, quite a lot, not only uh, of the current situation in, uh, in Ukraine. We talked also about Russia, about China, but uh, also from the Nordic countries. And uh, how do we take this? Do you want to join NATO now? Uh, well. We have a changed situation in uh, both in uh, Finland and Sweden. For the first time, we see that majority of people are pro, uh, according to the polls. And this is something we have now opened uh, uh, discussion with our parliament. Uh, we try to define all the circumstances, all the risks, and all the benefits. Uh, and uh, doing that quite efficiently as soon as possible. Mr. President, uh, there's an article in Atlantic, uh, the Atlantic Council. It says, uh, will Finland and Sweden join NATO now? A quote from that. For Finland, the shadow of history is always present. An 833-mile-long border with Russia means that Finland knows it can never take its sovereignty for granted. Finns haven't forgotten Soviet demands on their land and harbors in 1939 while secretly preparing for an invasion, which Moscow launched in November of that year. There is a lot of history uh, that maybe will lean you now, considering what's happening, towards getting into NATO. Yes, um, back to 1939, uh, except that uh, Russia attacked, uh, we uh, protected and defended our country. They didn't come in. One has to remember that. And surely that um, reminds uh, a bit the situation in Ukraine at the moment. You have to remember also that Finland has uh, maybe uh, behaved a bit uh, differently than European, many European countries. We have all the time be, have been very keen on developing our own defense forces, which are quite strong ones. So. <clears throat> That's one element uh, protecting us. And uh, European Union is now maybe more united than ever. We see also Germany taking strong position on defense sector. That means that uh, also Europe will cover more security. And the third element right. surely is uh, uh, mem membership of NATO. And like I said, uh, that is uh, under discussion in Finland. You already spend more than 2% of your GDP on uh, defense forces. You mentioned Germany. Um, Russian President Vladimir Putin talked to the chancellor of Germany today. Uh, according to the readout, he denied that Russian forces are bombing Ukrainian cities. I want to ask you about Vladimir Putin. You've met him a number of times. You've had a lot of meetings, many more perhaps than other leaders in the region. Have you noticed a change in Putin? <clears throat> if you follow his speeches and uh, opinions during the decades, he has always showed some kind of bitterness and uh, even uh, hatred, uh, because he has said Mother Russia has been mistreated. And this kind of an attitude has increased year after year. Now that uh, we all have seen how, in a way, lonely he seems to be, and makes a big distance to other people. 
uh, it's not maybe best possible for a person to live only with his uh, bitter and, uh, and uh, hate. That might increase uh, in his uh, thinking. So no, uh, this kind of change maybe, maybe has... Hmm? Do, do you think that he will Sorry. expand beyond Ukraine? He has done already so far something that we considered as impossible. And it's very difficult to predict what he's going to do next. But now it seems that he's going forward and destroying Ukraine. Last thing, Mr. President, uh, the NATO Secretary General has said that NATO warplanes will not do a no-fly zone. We understand the desperation but we also believe that if we did that, we we'll end up with something that could end in a full-fledged war in Europe involving many more countries. I assume you agree with that, uh, but where do you think this is going? Uh, surely it's a NATO decision, but um, I understand that uh, now uh, everybody wants to avoid more escalation which is all the time very nearby. There might be even accidental deeds which uh, suddenly break out. And uh, if we have escalation, we have a, a huge war in front of us. So mm, trying to safeguard that, I think, is uh, the reason why NATO is not present. President of Finland, uh, Mr. President, we really appreciate your time on Special Report. Thank you so very much. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.